Good morning, guys. Today we are at the Manton County Administrative Office to oppose an application to convert 2,700 acres next to the Freedom Factory and right into the Motorsports Park to allow three homes per acre to literally be built surrounding our racetracks. Today is going to be interesting. We've invited all of you guys out to the uh, county office today and we go in front of the Board of Commissioners in just a couple hours to oppose the application. If it goes through, they're basically going to change the zoning of the land and send out the application to the state. We need to stop it at a county level, so today if we can get a win, that'd be huge. We don't have high hopes because, you know, we're just a couple guys on the racetrack and we've got a lot of supporters coming. We've already got one here wearing Freedom Factory shirt. Just got off a, a full night shift. It's just the American people trying to fight back for what's right and we're going to go into this today with our heads up, hopefully get a win, but if not, we're going to leave with our heads up and uh, work on another solution. So let's do it. Today's going to be not so fun, but I think we can maybe come out ahead. Man, here we go. Did you dive your purse? Cavity shirts on this <laughs> Cavity shirts. Can we uh, request a cavity shirt? That wouldn't work. Did you, wait, you, did you drive your Porsche? Of course. <laughs> now, where's the 1905? Dude, we got guys here from Phoenix, Arizona. People flew Dude, in last night. I want them to think I'm underdressed right now. Yeah. Got the whole gang out in the lobby. We got a filled up room in here. We're getting back to it. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Garrett Mitchell, like I said, and I own the Freedom Factory, which is the Speedway on 64. It's been the Freedom Factory for three years. The drag strip is named Bradenton Motorsports Park. Right now, there's 15,000 people on the live feed for Manti County's live feed, which is exciting. And, uh, you know, look at all these people here. Like, look at all these people in opposition of what's trying to be passed today. I'm thankful, though, that we have the opportunity to speak before you today and express our opposition to this application. These are no highways, like uh, Kyle said the sound study was based on. I'm gonna show this photo on the overhead. Can we pull that up there real quick? Oh, yeah. All right, this is the project here in the x out area. This is our racetrack. This line right here signifies the typical place that I knock the head gasket out of my engine when I'm making a pass, <laughs> causing a loud explosion that every house in this community is going to here, whether there's a 20 foot fence or a 80 foot wide berm. We're very lucky to have two of the most successful racetracks in the county right here in Manatee County. Unfortunately, homes being built next to racetracks is a classic way they fail. The homeowners complain until the racetracks are overrun in local government. Having future homeowners sign a disclosure that the track is not, that the track is there is not enough. And it goes without saying a 20 foot tall fence is probably not enough to stop the sound of a screw-blown bald eagle breathing v8 the solutions the applicants are proposing will not work and that's why we all want this completely denied no transmittal let's keep in mind these racetracks operate more than 180 days a year and as an owner of the track i simply cannot let these dense neighborhoods get any closer than they are i think we all know that if this application the transmitted today, there's likely no going back. The state doesn't know the area like you guys do. They don't know the families at the track. They don't see the packed restaurants after a race night. They don't see the booked up hotels. This application needs to stop right here today. This rezoning could significantly impact Manatee County forever. I ask you this as I close this out because it seems like my time just went so fast. If I came to you commissioners today and asked you to rezone some of my land to build two massive loud racetracks right next to 4,500 homes that stood there for 50 years, would you approve it? And if the answer to that is no, then this is not a compatible use of the land. That is all I have to say. I want my son to own this racetrack one day. Don't let my racetrack die again. Thank you, sir. Sir. All right, guys, I encourage you to go check out the live feed. You can see my speech, Victor, the owner of the drag strip speech, Mike, uh, the owner of Wright Trailers, who really helped us out with a 10 minute technical speech. George spoke, Sam spoke, and inevitably this rezoning was voted on and we lost five to two. So the land is now going to the state level 
to be decided upon whether they will rezone it to three homes per acre. Basically, at the state level, there's nothing we can do. It's going to get approved. Now, I see everybody offering ideas on how to create a solution that will work for both parties. But you have to understand in battles like this, you have to go into the battle asking for the exact opposite of what the opposing party wants so that you can hopefully land somewhere in the middle. Yes, it was probably a little bit unrealistic of us to try and get this completely shut down, but yes, we're going to try. And by showing up today in mass force and sending 15,000 plus emails, which is just an estimate, I guarantee you it's more than that. We crashed the Manatee County server today. We were able to get every single commissioner to say on record that they will protect our racetrack at basically all costs. Some of them said it on several occasions, but here's a shot of them pretty much each saying it one time. The And any complaints by homeowners are going to be at the acknowledgement that they bought a home next to a racetrack. And that's something we're going to do before it gets here. So I would encourage you to look into that when you do your general development plan, because there's going to be a racetrack in that location for all of our lives. And we're going to, and we're going to make sure of it. I, I also want to make sure that this racetrack in the future is not hindered in any way for growth. And I know you said that they have other activities that they can do. I get it. But I want to make sure they're totally covered so that nowhere in the, no way in the future a board can come along and change anything. It needs to be written in stone. I want to ensure that this track is always going to be protected, no matter what. So I'm not going to vote uh, against the project. However, I am going to partner with Commissioner Cruz in ensuring that protections are put in place. In an ideal situation, we're looking for homes next to homes businesses next to businesses. We understand there have to be areas of transition between the two. Um, you know, but this is, doesn't seem like that. I would like to see uh, what, you know, what our plan is to protect things in the future before we make this vote. And I do think that that's um, one of the reasons that, that we need to make sure that the track is protected. And now before the applicant goes back before Manatee County, They've got to work with us. They've got to make some stuff work for both teams. Do I still worry a little bit that in 10 years when there's perhaps some snowflakes running the board that our track could get shut down? Yes. Is the risk now increased for that? Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, we just wrapped up the meeting in there, all day thing, and uh, we were trying to deny the application for the rezoning of the land, and after hours and hours and hours of people talking on our behalf. Over 15,000 emails we were told, 15,000 people on the live feed, they still went through with the zoning change. We didn't show up today, who knows if the racetracks would have even been mentioned. However, because we were here in such force, every single commissioner said, there has to be action taken to protect the racetracks to the highest level. In fact, several of them said the racetracks must be protected at all costs over the neighborhood. So now that the zoning has been approved, this group has to bring a site plan to the county. And the site plan says where all the homes will be, where the ponds will be, what the buffers will look like in between the homes and the racetrack. And we'll have to be at that meeting. Before that meeting, we're gonna be meeting with the developers to hopefully work on a solution, which I just talked to the owner of the entire development and he said, how cool would it be if we transformed the northeast corner surrounding the racetrack into a racer's village, which I never thought possible. And I don't know, you know, if he'll actually do that, but if we could convert the whole northeast corner into a racer's village and then put a wall behind that, maybe we will have enough of a buffer for these homeowners. But if you put homes right next to that racetrack, what happens all around the country is going to happen to our racetrack. So, you know, I'll keep you guys updated on this. Hopefully we can set up a meeting with the developers ASAP. And then before they turn the site land into the county, we can maybe make some changes that will help us out in the long run. The Freedom Factory in Bradenton Motorsports Park in the short term will be just fine. This stuff's going to start affecting us five, six years from now. But if we make the right actions over the next couple months, we may be able to save ourselves some headaches or even having the track shut down. So although we did not win today fully to what we wanted, which was to deny this all together, we put 
you know, ourselves on the map and really show the commissioners our force. And I hope that they truly follow through with their word of protecting the racetracks indefinitely. So we'll just have to wait and see, guys. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching New Dale Wolf Freaking. See you later.